You coming? You coming? He's staying. Okay. <clears throat> Come on. <sighs> Hello, family. <laughs> Okay, so this was gonna get um this was gonna be a get ready with me video and I was gonna get ready and talk to you about my tattoo because I'm getting my tattoo today. Uh, but then I got like really emotional and I had to take a break and anyways, we're gonna do it again. So this is the second time I'm filming. Hopefully I can articulate exactly what it is I'm wanna say. Okay, so first of all, this is my one, two, fourth tattoo. I had to count. <laughs> and I didn't get my first tattoo till I was 25. And <clears throat> I love tattoos and they're not for everybody and that's fine. But I, I like them. Not enough to get a whole like sleeve. Well, no, that's not true. I love sleeves. I think they're beautiful. I just don't have the balls for it. And I don't think I could pull it off. So this tattoo will be going right here underneath my clavicle. Uh, I am going to vlog it, but I wanted to explain the significance of this tattoo because it's very um, emotional, which I know my, may sound silly to some people, but it's the truth. So my tattoo is um, a word that has been symbolic to me very much this past, these past two years. Um, the word is excelsior and it is Latin for onward and upward or ever upward or higher, meaning um, you just keep going, keep going up and don't let life hold you down and just to basically keep thriving even if you are in the valley, you know? So if you've been on this channel for a while, you know all the things that went on in 2019 uh, for us and our family. And so you, you know a lot of it and how ugly it got. What most of you probably don't know is just how I was affected by it because I didn't talk about it. I didn't tell anyone I didn't even really tell Ken. I was pregnant when all of it happened. I was in my first trimester when the first fire happened and I was nine months pregnant when the second fire happened. And like the whole in between, I was pregnant. I was on hormones because I had to go through IVF. So I was injecting hormones the first trimester. It was, I was in an emotional place anyways. Whenever you inject hormones into your body, things go a little upside down but then everything happened and all of the um things that came along with the fires as well all of the hate and just overall negative things that were being said about ken and me and our family and everything and in the beginning i was very very defensive and I wanted to defend us i'm I don't know, I'm, I was protective. And through the past two years, I've learned that I don't have to justify myself to anyone. Um, you're more than welcome to think what you like. And so I've, I've let that go. In the, that year, I went through some very dark times and it was the worst year of my life worst year of my life and I hope it stays the worst year of my life. I hope we never go through anything else that makes things worse. I know there will be trials and tribulations to come but I mean to top that would be significant. Even 2020 for us personally hasn't topped that. It has been a shit year. Don't get me wrong but I mean it's gonna be hard to top 2019. So I went through a lot of emotional things. I probably should have been committed, to be honest, but I didn't talk to anybody and I really was putting on a brave face and pretending I was fine. I was, in fact, not fine. <laughs> um, I was having very scary thoughts. Like, if I told you the things that I thought about 
as a human in general, it would scare you. But knowing I was pregnant at the time, it would really scare you. Um, I can't even say it. it. It was very bad things and um, it scared me. And then I knew if I told anybody that I would have to go get help. And I probably should have and I, I should have gotten help, but I didn't. And I persevered and got through it on my own, but I shouldn't have done that. And I, I mean, if you're having, I know a lot of people are going through a lot in 2020. And if you are that bad, you need to talk to somebody and get help because um, it's not okay to go through that by yourself. And I don't recommend it to anyone. So it built, it built up, you know, through over time because we just kept having People hit us and hit us and hit us with um, personal attacks, financial attacks, you know, bringing things up from Ken's past, like all of this stuff. Um, so it, it was a lot to, to deal with. And so I had read a book a long time ago called uh, Silver Linings Playbook. And in that book, um, the guy is going through a lot of mental health issues too. And the word that he chooses to pick to get through things and to try to see the silver lining basically is Excelsior. And um, so for some reason that got brought back up to me in that time and I held on to it. And in uh, January of 2020, um, I posted on in Instagram or Facebook, I can't remember. And I was like, everybody pick a word for 2020 that's going to define your year. And Excelsior was my word. And it has got me through a lot just continuing to say, no, I won't let that bring me down. I won't let other people's opinions bring me down. And what other people think about me is none of my business. It's none of my business. And I won't let that bring me and my family and my joy down. I really, really have grown as an overall person in the past year. Um, even looking back at myself, I'm like, well, that's a completely different person. I am so different. So, um, one of the main things that has changed about me is my perspective on many, many things, but in general, prioritization of family and mental health and overall self-care. And I'm not talking about like getting your hair did, getting your nails done self-care. I'm talking about actual mental self-care and keeping my um, mental health in check because uh, I do, like in my family, we have anxiety runs in my family and um, I'll never not have anxiety, but I have learned to manage it much, much better than I did. And a lot of what I was doing to become more anxious, I was doing to myself I was allowing it to happen to me instead of taking control of that. So I was allowing others' opinions and um, whatever they were saying, I was allowing it to affect me when I don't have to. And I used to really engage with the trolls and try to, like I'm a, I'm a pleaser to a point, but then also you can kiss my ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an Aquarius, if that means anything to you. I know some people don't care about Zodiac, but like, I'm a true Aquarius. I, I want you to be happy with me if I care about you. But then I draw the line much better now than I used to. That if, if you're not a part of my life, then what you think about me, I don't care. Doesn't matter. So I stopped engaging with the trolls. And here's what helped me do that. Um, a lot of you, most of you, are very positive, uplifting people, especially if you're a subscriber or you've been following me and Ken for a while. Like, you guys are lovely people and you make my day so much better. I love reading your comments and your messages. I love that. It's so awesome to hear from you guys, especially your success stories and your health stories. Like, that stuff lifts me. I feed off of it. It's amazing. I love hearing how you've changed your life because that's, that's what Ken and I started doing this for. We wanted to reach people and help as many people as possible. And I realized I was giving more attention to the trolls than I was to my people. And that's not fair to you guys. It wasn't fair to you guys. I had to change my perspective on that. I was like, why am I giving my attention to the 10% when I should be giving it to the 90%? And so I stopped engaging in trolls 
and that's really helped. <laughs> and I'm not talking about people who disagree with me. Like, you're more than welcome to disagree with me. Some people, like, for, you know, some people like tattoos, some people don't. It's not those people. And it's not even, like, vegans. It's people, well, it's not the nice vegans. Because I have friends that are vegans. I was a vegan. I have nothing against vegans. If you're going to come on my page and call me ugly names and bash me and just be a horrible person on my page, I don't engage with me, you. I don't read your whole post. I ban you and I block you and that's it. I'm done. Period. And that goes for people who um, hurt me personally as well. I, I am a forgiver by nature, but there are some things that I can forgive you, but that doesn't mean I'm going to keep you in my life or allow you in my life or allow you to even talk to me. And that's fine. And if like, I'm okay with that. If you don't agree with that, I'm okay with that too. So this word, it symbolizes so much more than this very small tattoo. It symbolizes the fact that I have overcome a lot of demons that I didn't even know I had. Um, and so that's why I'm getting it permanently put onto my body in a, a way that you can see it a lot of times. Like, <laughs> you guys know, I wear my shirt like this 90% of the time. I've, I've done that basically my whole life. <laughs> And, and so you, you will be able to see it. Now, if I want to cover up, I totally can cover it up, but I don't really want to cover it up. I want someone to say, what, does, what does that mean? And for me to be like, it means upward, onward and upward. Keep going. No matter what life throws at you, you've got this. You have all the power within yourself to change your perspective and the narrative. And can't nobody bring you down. If you were living your truth, if you were just being your honest, open self, then what, what can anybody do to me? Because I own my shit. I, Ken owns his shit. We, neither one of us have ever been like, we're perfect people. I, we're, we're not. In fact, um, I think both of us go out of our way to make sure you guys know that like we, we're not perfect and we've made mistakes in our past, you know. Um, me, not as many as Dr. Barry, but <laughs> you know, I've made mistakes. I don't want to fight anymore. I, I don't. I'm, it's not in me. I'm a peaceful person now. I'm a peaceful human. I want that to exude from me because I want my child to have a peaceful home and a peaceful childhood. And I, and I live by that. <laughs> um, I think that maybe that just about covers it. Um, yeah. So that's truth talk for this, um, Friday. And, uh, I'm going to go do some Instagram reels, some fashion videos, and some inspirational videos over on Instagram. If you don't follow me on, on Instagram, um, I'll leave my handle over here for you guys. Also, again, we're fixing to hit 50,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join my Nisha tribe and I'm going to do a giveaway when I hit 50k and I'm thinking butcher box. I think if I can work it out where I can give away a butcher box to someone, that's what I'm going to do because I feel like that's something that everybody, who doesn't want a box of meat unless you're a vegan. If you are, uh, I'll send you kale or money because uh, I love, I love vegans. Okay. They don't like me very much. I, I think that they're on the whole, pretty good people <laughs> until they come after me and tell me that I'm killing the planet. It's okay though. Anyways, that's story time. The next time I see you, we will be on our way to Hart and Huntington in downtown Nashville, which is actually where I got my very first tattoo. Not at this Hart and Huntington. I got it done in uh, Orlando at Universal City Walk at that Hart and Huntington, but it's the same chain. It's owned by Pink and her husband. Casey Hart, and I absolutely love the girl I'm going to. Oh my gosh, she's a queen, a queen. And guess what? She's obsessed with Harry Potter and all things cool and geeky like that. So she, she was right up my alley and her work is just phenomenal. 
So I can't wait. I'm excited. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. <laughs>